How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing? Turn, turn that down. Turn that down. How you guys doing? How you guys doing? Man, these transitions are terrible. Who, who, who's in charge of pushing the buttons? Come on now. Yeah, ser seriously, like we're not ready for that. We have we don't have a hundred people signed in today. We don't have a hundred likes yet. So we got to get a hundred likes. How's everybody doing today? How's how's everybody doing today? FMG, FM Gaming. There you go, Travis. How you doing? Shadow, how you doing? Fantastic. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Less than a week before you get your bike, Brendo, we go. Norville's. Where's everybody from? Where's everybody from? Write in the comments. There we go. Yeah, we can get it to this. We can get to this. Where's everybody from? We're going to get to this, uh, this little lesson that we got going on here. Uh, we're going to talk about weather conditions and, you know, how to, how to basically navigate crosswinds. We're going to start that off. Um, and then we're going to get into, we have three crashes. Bam, bam, bam. Hey, how you doing? Tucson. Yeah, yeah. Asheville, AJ's Revenge, Arizona, North Texas, Netherlands, Berlin, East Texas, Ohio. Woo. Hey, good to have you here, FM Gaming. Kansas, Montana, UK. We're doing good over here, Texas. I see it, Montana. Florida, California, Maryland. Okay, okay, okay. Malaysia, wow, Bulgaria, Pakistan. Huntington Beach, Brazil, all over the world. Wow. Wow. It's good to have you guys in here. It's good to have Thailand. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, we're going to we're going to get into this uh this right here. Uh once we get to 100 likes and we'll get started. It should only take about 10 minutes. I got to get the education in. This is how we get credit for today's class. And then we're going to go over some uh, after action reviews. I just posted on my Instagram uh, on my story. It's from Philcraft Survival. It's an insane. You know what? In fact, let's just go ahead and take a look at it. It is an insane um You guys want to see a a, a mangled leg? You guys want to see what uh, a car can do to your leg if you don't pay attention? Whew, gosh, it's it's terrible, actually. It's pretty bad. Let's take a look. There's no audio on it. Ooh, don't look, don't look, don't look yet. Don't look yet. We're gonna we're gonna rewatch it. We're gonna rewatch it. We're gonna rewatch it. Once it pops, you want to see the mechanism. Okay. He's looking back and he, he can't step down. Okay, look. Take a look. So, was completely anticipating that car. Yeah, look at his leg. Look at his leg. He's not going to be able to step on that one. And there's the toes. Kind of dangling. Ooh, we got some blood loss. Some That's some blood loss there. Yeah, so that's why you need a tourniquet, guys. Just go ahead and high and tight right on that leg because you have arterial bleeding going on right there. You got some arterial bleeding. You see it on the ground. It's just dripping, drip, 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 drip. Yep. Yeah, so take a look at the mechanism. You know, so we're, we're sitting here hoping that this car is going to kind of move out of the way for us, but didn't. And we decided to swerve very last second. We weren't, yeah, that leg's gone. It's probably an amputation at that point. Uh, pretty terrible stuff. Pretty terrible stuff. Yeah, so I post that kind of stuff on my Instagram stories. So if you guys want to check out my Instagram, it's Dan Dan the Fireman. Um, kind of important. Just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that ripped off all his gear. So no matter, like to be honest, uh, your gear is not going to save you in that situation. It's called getting out of the way. It's called not getting hit. You know, that's kind of the goal. Go and grab a slice of pizza. Um, the leg could be saved. Could be. Those toes, probably not. Those toes probably, it ripped off his shoe. I think he had shoes on, but it ripped it off. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be, I, I, mm, I don't know. I don't know what the state of, uh, surgeries and, and how good they can can work but um, 
I mean, we're talking not just feet. We're talking tib fib. We're talking his his knee joint. Um, probably his femur. Um, it probably knocked his the head of his femur into his pelvis a little bit too hard. Might have cracked some of that. Um, we're having lots of issues. Yeah, it, we're, we're having some issues there. More than likely an amputation from below the knee. Yeah. Yeah, very lucky if you could have it below the knee. You know what I mean? Oof. Oh, canopy cheese. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Tasha. Sorry about that. Guys, once we hit 100 likes, let's get... let's. Uh, we got 100 people in here. Click that like button. We'll get started on this, and then we're going to get into... Um, we're going to get into some crashes. We do have tr we do have a tourniquet in here. Boom, boom. Terrible stuff. Terrible stuff. Terrible stuff. Yeah, his, his, eh, his riding days might not be over, but um, I know some people that, that do ride still with, with uh, missing body parts. I mean, the left leg is really just a shifter. So if you get like a Honda Rebel 1100 or, or something that, um, well, he was riding a dual sport, so you can get like the, was it the Africa Twin? And you don't need to shift. You just need to be able to put your foot on the peg if you have a, a peg leg. There you go, Brandon. Good one. <laughs> yeah, it was avoidable. So how do we learn from that? You know what I mean? How do we get? How do we uh, avoid that? Better position for safety. You know. Better position for safety. How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing today? We got 60 likes. You know what? Let's see. If, let's see if we can get to 100 by the time we finish this right here. Let's make sure I got everything going on. All right. So you guys get to see it ahead of time. Oops. I double clicked it. Okay. Making sure the transitions work. There we go. To the beginning let's get to the there we go yeah 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 Mike, 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 check. There we go. Got the mic check. Yeah, so we got all this. Oh, oh. There we go. So we got stuff going on. We we have this. We have this here. Okay. First time watching live, Klein. How you doing? Send that rain to Texas. We're drying over here. You guys got humidity. You got some moisture in the air. It's not rain. <laughs> Looking like a Zoom lecturer, just a little bit, Owen. Just a little bit. Uh, we got we got some real stuff. So this is the motorcycle training concepts aspect. Let's go ahead and turn off this mic. It's the motorcycle training concepts aspect of what we're trying to do here. So um, we have you know some key tips. You know I haven't been able to go out riding for quite a bit. We're not starting yet. I haven't been able to get out riding uh, in a while. And uh, usually I do this stuff while I'm on the bike. But I realize what I can do is I'll just I'll just do it in class while we're doing our live stream. I'll get on the bike and maybe we'll can uh, do some stuff. But uh, if anything, just throw some B-roll up there. So guys, make sure you hit that like button. It's 25 more likes and we'll get started on um, the actual crashes and close calls. But this is a good practice for me because my goal is to, is to do this in person. My goal is to do this in person. I want to start doing some Tucson events. Like, I'm serious. Like, um, I'm, I'm going to have a nice little discussion tomorrow. Uh, with somebody, but we're trying to get something going on to where we can do something local. Maybe a small group, five to ten people, show up, get some real pizzas, um, have some lessons, but then having some more of like a fellowship kind of hanging out and uh, chit-chatting a little bit. So my, that's my goal. We're starting here. I'm having a good time doing this, so we'll see how it goes. 
I don't mind the heat, but yards good. Okay, good child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. What's up, my ninjas? How you doing? All right. We got to get started here. I'm going to hit that record button. And here we go. So what is up, everybody? We're going to be talking about how to handle crosswinds. Now, crosswinds are pretty scary, especially when you're out riding in higher speeds. In town, it's not too much because you have buildings, but it can get a little scary, especially when it gusts at you. So we're going to be talking about that. Okay, so I know you guys like to go riding, but crosswinds can be a big problem, uh, especially now here with monsoon season. You're going to have some wind, some water, and a bunch of other stuff, maybe even hail. Um, but the most important thing is actually being able to stay within your lane. We talk about positioning for safety. We're making sure that we're not you know, getting knocked into the next lane and getting hit or getting knocked into the next car that's kind of next to us or even knocked off on the road. So we're going to be talking about that. Here's some tips right here, okay? So first and foremost, you want to check your, the weather conditions. Okay, so I get it that you're going to be commuting possibly to work, so you're already there. You're at work, nothing you can really do when you're on your way back, and there's some crosswinds, you've got 10 miles to go, uh, maybe 20 minutes of riding, pretty scary, in and out of uh, interstate, highway, in town, all that stuff. And there's nothing you can really do about that, but if this is going to be more so like a weekend thing and you're not very comfortable or you don't know how to uh, navigate these crosswinds then when you check the weather and it says there's gonna be some crosswinds maybe maybe don't go out riding that day or don't go riding during that time uh, but hopefully you can uh, some with some of these tips so make sure you check it out um, go go to whatever weather app that you like the most uh, I know Apple has their own I know Google has some stuff and whatever it is but just go ahead and check it out uh, but yeah main thing here is not that consistent wind that's gonna be pushing you because you can actually lean into it and we'll talk a little bit about that it's gonna be those wind gusts those wind gusts really get you especially when you're crossing um, you know, be in between buildings or like a semi's passing, we'll talk about that in some of these next things. So reducing your speed is a big one. So this is going to be something huge for uh, corners, intersections, anything. So one of the things that we can do and we have a lot of control over is the speed that we're going. So rolling off the throttle is going to give you a little bit more time and, um, and, and energy and some space to actually make it to where you, you can make some better decisions. So if you're going too fast and all of a sudden a gust hits you, you're gonna have to roll off the throttle and then try to get back in your lane. But if you're already going slow enough, maybe there's gonna be some space for you to avoid anything like that, like a pothole, uh, if you get pushed into something like a road service hazard or even oncoming traffic, pretty scary, pretty scary. So just reduce your speed during the wind. You know, that's a big one there. Uh, like I said, you're gonna have more reaction time. So when in doubt, roll off the throttle and get into a position to escape somewhere. So you get gusted, you know, you're rolling up throttle, get back into a good position. So just in case something happens, you're already in your escape path. That's for positioning for safety, guys. The right grip. Okay, very important. Uh, if you have a lot of grip on that handlebar and you're really holding it and like you're basically keeping your body on the bike using your arms, that's going to be translated into your handlebars, which can be translated into your front tire, which can cause a little bit of shakiness and it's already going to be shaky because of the wind. So what you want to do is actually grip it with your knees. So grip the tank with your knees and try to be a little bit loose up top with a, just barely any tension. So you really want to have like good grip on the handlebars, but you're, you're kind of loose up here. You're gripping with your legs. You can actually try that sitting down right now, kind of put your, your feet planted on the ground, get your arms out instead of like holding it tight, just kind of sit up there, nice upright back and, and, and just hold your arms out. Not tight, not tense, but holding them out. You'll realize that you can actually control the bike doing that. You can practice it without having all that wind. So practice it uh, today when you're out riding um, or this weekend when you're out riding. Have your handlebars, well, of course, have your hands on the handlebars. Grip it tight. See how difficult it is to really kind of make adjustments. Now grip the tank and then stay nice and loose up top. That's going to help you out with those winds. You're not going to be flying off the bike. You're still going to be able to grab if you need to. But uh, the main thing here is keep that lower body attached to the bike with your knees. Okay, so lean into the wind. So if you have crosswinds coming in this way, lean in towards it that way. And that's going to make it to where it's, you're going to be actually going straight. <laughs> so if you're upright and you're straight and the wind's pushing you um, from, I think on your screen, guys, left to right, um, it's going to be pushing you towards uh, left to right. So if you lean into it, you're going to be going straight. And it's kind of a weird concept, but it's exactly like what this is showing right here. One thing that, I, that I, I'm not putting in here that I've said in the past that, I, that works amazing is when you're riding, and I know you want to grip the tank with your knees, but if it's getting to the point where you're like really leaning in and it's not really helping and you feel like you're leaning too far, stick your knee out like a sail. So let's say the wind's coming in this way, stick your knee out and sail and you're supposed to do, be leaning towards it. It's actually going to be pulling you towards the wind and it's going to help you stay upright. 
So check it, uh, check it out. Try it out. Uh, next time you're out riding and there's some wind coming in from the side, whichever wind's hitting you from whatever side, stick that knee out and see for yourself. That's what I do. Absolutely works great and allows me to keep, um, keep, keep stable and keep upright. Okay. Be cautious when passing large vehicles this is what I was talking about. And also buildings, also corners in the mountains, also anything that's blocking the wind, like a big billboard. So anything that's blocking that gust or that, that strong wind is very important to uh, be very cautious around. So if we're coming up to, let's say some buildings, it's crosswinds, we're leaning really hard, we have our knee out and everything, and all of a sudden that building blocks that wind, that lean is gonna now, since there's no wind to offset it, you're gonna be leaning towards exactly where you're leaning. So being uh, able to anticipate the fact that there's a semi coming, that there's a mountain range coming, you're going through a valley, or there's buildings right here, be it, just adjust yourself, okay? So we're going through town, don't really feel the crosswinds, you can see the trees kind of going crazy, but you don't feel it because the buildings, the moment you leave that area, it's just gonna hit you, and then it's gonna kind of knock you a little bit. So before we get into that open area, let's go ahead and start leaning a little bit and getting uh, prepped for it, maybe and stick that leg out, and then once it does hit, it's hopefully not gonna be that jarring of an experience. Remember, we're trying to focus on the wind gusts, not necessarily the high winds, okay? So like I said, open, uh, open areas might expose you to more forceful crosswinds. Very important. So if we're crossing on the other side of the semi and the wind's pushing against the semi and we're going on the opposite lane, obviously, um, when we're getting close to it, we're leaning in. Once we get next to the semi, all of a sudden uh, we lose that wind and then we get it right back the moment we pass that semi. So it's kind of jarring. Anticipate that. Write in the comments if you've ever dealt with something like that. It's pretty scary, especially if you're passing a semi and a bunch of vehicles. You don't want to be jostled around, okay? So in conclusion, remember, keep updated on the weather. Adjust your speed. Perfect your grip, okay? Remember, your knees are what you're gripping at this point. Practice leaning. Be cautious around vehicles in open areas. Practice does make progress. We're not trying to be perfect here. We're trying to be 1% better, 1% better, 1% better, just like with any other skill set. And this is just one of those skill sets that you might have to utilize when you're out riding. So like all riding challenges, facing crosswinds gets it easier with experience and practice. Write in the comments if you ever dealt with crosswinds. Write in the comments if you dealt with rain crosswinds, hail and crosswinds. Write your tips that you have learned throughout the years. It really helps out everyone else that are reading it. Um, but yeah, I'll be seeing you guys later. There it is. Boom, look at that. Look at that. That was fun. I like crosswind stuff. How you guys doing today? How you guys doing today? Bill from next door, you get to be in the video later. <laughs> so we got that. Um, so if you like those kinds of things where I'm putting them up on the MTC Rider Academy uh, right after the live stream, um, this one probably going to be a little bit later because I'm going to add some stuff to it. But you get the PowerPoint too. You get to download the PowerPoint. You get the article with it. You get the video with it. And then one month later, it goes up on uh, Motorcycle Training Concepts YouTube channel. So as a member of the MTC Rider Academy, you get it right away. So make sure you guys sign up. And in fact, I'll show you guys what it looks like. So this is the MTC Rider Academy. This is the membership site that we have here. It's $120 a year, so it's 10 bucks a month. The weekly webinars. So these are all the, the weekly webinars that we're doing, and we're going to be adding the crosswinds right here, right underneath it. And this is season one. And uh, you get it right away. On MTC YouTube channel, it, these haven't been up there yet. So, yeah. Sign up. And that's not the only thing you get. So you get those. You get the basic Smart Rider course, which we just launched Unit 5. Unit 5 is the rescue awareness. So you get all of this. This is how to become a basic smart rider. This is how I ride my motorcycle. So if you like how I ride motorcycles, if you like uh, the situation awareness, the things that I do say, this is more of a condensed version. This is more of a like straight to the point. We're not messing around. We're not joking so much. Um, we do joke a lot, but uh, this is where it's like, no, we're, we're getting right into it. And this is constantly being improved. So this is a living uh, course. I'm already working on the second version of the basic smart rider course. Uh, unit six is going to be a mentorship course, which is what I'm going to be focusing on for the second version of this. And then we're going to get more into it. But you also get the smart rider motorcycle training drills. 
which you get all the drills, all the videos to it. Um, you get the downloadable right there, uh, the phone downloadable, everything, everything, everything. And then on top of that, like I said, this, the course, the drills, the webinar, I'm, work, I'm working on the After Ride podcast again, and then the MTC library. So you actually get to download all of these things. You get to have them. So all the digital versions of all the books, you get the digital version of the booklet here and the phone-friendly version with your membership, with your membership. So check it out. Link's in the description. Let's get out of that. We got more and more stuff coming up. I'm excited about it. Can't wait. I got a I got a series that I want to I'm I'm working on. It's called How, Dan. How do I? MSF is free. Where? Where do you get your free MSF? Because MSF wasn't free for me. September 6th for your MSF course. Nice. Yeah, 160 for the class. Yeah. Free in Illinois. That's great. That's great. Yeah, not in Arizona. 100 likes. We got, ooh, very nice. We got 100 people signed in already. We're going to get started. We're going to get started. We have three crash compilation videos from Moto Stars. Yeah, it's, it's not free. I mean, in some areas it is. That's pretty cool, though. Some states, they subsidize it. That's really nice. I'm glad they do that. All right, guys, we're going to get started on this one. We're going to hit that record button. You know how it works. Let's make sure I get that pen out. Yeah, and so the course that, that I provide, it's not an endorsement course. And you get, you get access to the whole thing for, for a full year. On top of that, you get the, all the downloadables that, that I put out. And it's consistently being updated. It's consistently being updated. So we launched the course, Unit 1, I believe in May. And it's mid-August now, or end of August now. And uh, Unit 5 is up. And uh, my goal is every, every year to update it twice. And it's just going to be like updated materials, updated graphics. Uh, same principles, nothing's really changing, changing, but it's more so um, easier to understand. So we're trying to make complex co uh, concepts and making it simpler while also giving you the option to, to really just hear me out with the <laughs> with, when it comes to the con uh, complex stuff. That's what we do here. We do the crashes, right? We're trying to make, trying to make things uh, a little bit easier to understand when it comes to... Um, understand what's kind of happening with these these crashes and it's like you know what can we do what we, that's the whole point of the after action process so i got distracted i'm reading the chat here twenty eight hundred dollars that's <laughs> that's what i'm reading yeah exactly chris what the what is oof, oof. it's not free it's taxpayer funded but at the end of the day you know shane maybe it's going to save the taxpayers a little bit of money by having more educated people on the road so I have no problem spending my tax money on on education that actually has a real benefit when it comes to life, you know. There's some there's a lot of education out there that my taxes pay for that I'm not not happy about. Owen, oh, uh, sorry, no no way to submit. We usually just do uh, Moto Stars, Moto Madness. Um, let them kind of do their thing. They do some good stuff. Um, I've I've done I've created my own videos and it was just. Uh, 400 bucks at your Harley. Yeah, Nitrous Ninja. Yes, and that's one of those things that I want to want to really work on when it comes to uh, like what we're doing here, like the mentorship part. So uh, Nitrous Ninja says, my buddies taught me how to ride years ago. It's like, you know, ones if your buddies had like, like a pamphlet, right? Or ones if they had, um, ones if they had like material to be like, hey, you know, take this home, read about it, and we're going to work on it, you know, this weekend. And that's what I want to do. I want to create that material for your buddies or for, like, uncles or, or for other people to, to like, have stuff that is more structured versus, like, hey, this is, this is what the clutch lever looks like. All right, cool. Now you understand it? Cool. No, I, like, I want to get it to the point where it's, you know, here's the clutch lever. Go ahead and squeeze it in. You know, the friction zones are usually around three and four. You know, if you go from zero 
You go from zero, one, two, three. There it is. It's starting to move. Four. Yeah, it's moving. Five. Yeah, it's moving all the way. Release is ten, and it's like, yeah, you see what I mean? And that's what I, I want to get. I want to get more educated mentors out there. If that makes sense. That's what I'd love to do. That's what I'm working on. That's what I'm working on. Twist of the wrist back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to get started. I do see we have 109 people signed into class today. So 137 people in class, though. I mean, come on, guys. Go ahead and, and you know, take a seat. Where am I? Where am I? Oh, there we are. Okay, take a seat. Grab a slice of pizza. We're going to get started. We have things we have to do. Okay? We have things we have to do. We're going to get into it. Yeah, you know what I mean? That'd be great. Are you still teaching the class, Dan? Uh, no, not. No, I'm not teaching uh, MSF stuff. All right, here we go, guys. Let's. We got. We got music. We have the recording button. Three, two, and one. All right, everybody. We have a Moto Stars video today. Lots of crashes. Lots of close calls. The goal is to figure out what happened, so that we don't do it ourselves. And let's learn from it. Okay, we're not here to judge. We're here to learn. Situation that very nicely okay. shows how pointless and time wasting robot aggression is. Okay, accelerated through. Okay, zero to speed limit. Hopefully. A little bit of a power wheelie going up there. Okay, we got some construction. Ooh, somebody got pissed off. That's fine. Let them let them go ahead. Let them go ahead. Let the idiots be out in front because now you can watch them. They can't hit you unless they slam the brakes, and that way you can hopefully avoid it and dodge it. He's on the phone. You said, huh? What up? He's just having some fun. You know, his little Honda Accord accelerating, do some illegal driving, reckless riding, you know, all that stuff, you know, kind of cool. Anyways, we're going to move on, hopefully. Yeah, whatever. Get over it. Let's. No, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. See, see what I mean? Let's go back. Okay, maybe we are doing this. You see what I mean by having the person up in front so that you can avoid them? Now, if you're up in front of them, look what happened. Possibly hitting you and you have to swerve out of the way. Now what happens to them? They get a they get a bumper, maybe get some insurance, maybe a little bit of legal problems. But they get to have that mentality of, yeah, I hurt that guy. Remember when I did that? Yeah, whatever. You know, it damaged my car, you know, oh yeah, it's a badge of honor to get in trouble to some people. Like this right here, it's a badge of honor to damage somebody's vehicle and then do illegal stuff. Um they also feel the same way and they could damage you. They can hurt you, they can kill you, they can do all that stuff. Now you really piss them off, road rage. For what? Yeah. For what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. No. Now we're now we're having issues. What, bro? So we're just gonna watch this and see how stupid it is. That's what we're gonna do. See? See? Imagine if that was like brand new asphalt and he just like slipped. Turned around. That was the most that was the most stupid thing I've seen uh, all day. And it's only 10:30 in the morning, so let's see if we can get more. All right, we're riding with the buddies. Green light go 917. Hopefully, we're talking on a Cardo Pack Talk edges and bolts. Links in the description for a discount. Ooh, road surface hazards. What happened? Ooh, somebody's down. Somebody's down. Time to rescue. Time to rescue. Hopefully, we're talking to each other. <laughs> Okay, we got some people on the far right, hopefully helping and assisting. He is in a position for safety, hopefully. Okay, we're on the guardrail. He can jump over just in case somebody's coming at him. But we have a road surface hazard right here, which is a motorcycle. Okay, so make sure you dodge the motorcycle. Look how damaged it is. Looks like he's propping himself up on, on the wall. So maybe some leg damage. Oof. Oh, he's got a tech air. That's cool. Good for this rider. Good for this rider. That's a, it's an airbag vest. It's Alpine Stars. So how do we help each other? How do we, uh, yeah, remain calm, sure on safety. Make sure we're off on the side of the road. And if that person is bleeding out, make sure you can stop those major bleeds. All right, so Gertie, here we go. Open lane pattern with the U-Haul. There it is. 
So it's very quick. It's not one of those things where it's like, hey, you recognize it. And good job navigating, by the way. So it's not one of those things where you can just, you know, recognize it. And it's like you can always keep yourself out of that situation. Sometimes you just see it. So right here we have that vehicle in front of us moving fast. This is the faster lane. This is the left lane. We have a U-Haul stuck behind that vehicle. You can see it. You know, when somebody is stuck behind another vehicle, like this one, and they only leave like so little of a space cushion, they're just on their butt. They're very impatient. You can see from people when they're driving like this that how impatient they are. So they're going to want to switch over once they see that this vehicle passes because they looked in their left mirror, right? So they looked in the left mirror. They saw this person. They're like, cool. As soon as that person passes my, my uh, peripheral vision, I'm going to go ahead and switch over. I'm not even going to look, blah, 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 blah. And that's typically where we are. We're in those blind spots. We, we're just not seeing inintentional blindness. Other vehicle, other vehicle drivers are looking for other vehicles. Okay, motorcyclists are looking for other motorcyclists. So unless that uh, U-Haul driver is actually paying attention, is a motorcyclist, recognizes it, watches these videos, they're not going to see you. So with that said, what do we do? Okay, so remember the after action review, right? What do we do? If we see this pattern coming up, okay, our lane is moving faster than the other lane, the other person looks impatient, we have to anticipate there's a possibility that there's somebody going to be switching over in front of us. And so we can slow down, roll up the throttle. We can uh, keep them and maintain a staggered position until it's safe for us to accelerate through. Um, or we can do what this person did. Just didn't see it, didn't, didn't know, wasn't either was focused on mirrors, focused on something else, because there's so much going on when, when you're riding, especially as a new rider. Um, just didn't see it, whatever it was. We have to navigate the situation. We have to uh, locate, you know, position locate right here, assessing this is a relevant threat, and then we have to navigate it once it comes out. So let's go and take a look at this one. It's right here. Okay, cool. We're going to go and switch over. So now we have to do something. We have to find an escape path. We got to get ourselves out of here. So honking the horn's not going to solve the problem. The person already switched over. Look at, we got, sh we got shoved off into this area. So we got the rumble strips causing some issues with our handlebars, you know, possibly we have some road surface hazards, maybe lots of, you know, metal, debris, rocks, everything on here. So we're going to have some issues possibly popping our tire. Pretty, pretty scary. But the cool thing happened was that he navigated this situation. So navigating the situation is extremely important because if you don't, you were going to get hit. So once again, make sure you navigate active threats. And how do you navigate active threats? We can swerve. We can progressively brake so we can squeeze that front brake and then slow ourselves down. Especially at highway speeds would be something easy to do. Engine braking, let's go ahead and roll off that throttle if we had to. And if we had the room, we could have accelerated. We could have sped right through. Okay, so look at these are all the tools that we have at our disposal to navigate. It's not just honking. The, you see there's no honking the horns and red bombings. We can also change lane positions. Not, we couldn't do it in this situation. Couldn't do it in this situation, but we kind of changed into this lane, if you want to call it a lane. It's more of like an escape path shoulder, right? But we have to, you know, watch out for any small obstacles in that area. So crossing over them, how do we do that? Lift our butt up just a tiny bit. Try to dodge them as best we can. But at the end of the day, what could we have done? You know, progressively braked or engine braked. That's what I would have done. But uh, handled it. Watch it one more time. Take a look. So what he did is swerve. And we should have, he's rolling off the throttle for engine braking, but we could have gotten ourselves out of that situation quicker by applying progressive braking. Good job, though. Saved himself. That's all that matters. That is all that matters. If I say. The heavy road conditions made the newest turn too difficult for this rider. This clip perfectly shows why it's worth to wear the proper gear. Okay, well, we're going to find out why they need to wear gear. Let's go take a look. Chevron, sharp turn. Looks like a little bit wet on the road. Those hands are torn up. Those hands are probably torn up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this real quick. So, no gloves. It looks like it's just a windbreaker. Let's look at the road. It looks a little bit wet to me. To Write in the comments if you think it is. But we do have chevrons up ahead. Okay, we have chevrons right here. So these chevrons indicate that it is supposed to be a sharp turn. It's not going to be the easiest turn ever. Now, if they're closer, let's say there's a chevron here, chevron here, chevron here, chevron here. That means it's a tighter turn. The more spread out they are, the mean it's it's less uh, of a sharp, sharp turn. But this is also why I have a GPS on my my handlebars. Okay, I use quad lock. Um, so I can see what's coming up. I can see kind of how sharp of a turn it is, kind of what's happening. And those look pretty sharp. Uh, one thing that we can do when it comes to being a smart rider, okay, first we're seeking maintaining our skills, right? But we need to acquire uh, and use personal protective equipment. 
So when we see this happening, it's going to be blurred out because because Moto Stars doesn't want to get demonetized. But as soon as we drop the bike, what is it? What is it that we do? You know, when we fall down, we we put our hands out. Now, if you rip up all this fatty tissue, you have ligaments and tendons in there. You rip it all up. Now you have to go to work. Who here works with their hands? Probably a lot of us, right? A lot of us works with our hands. So if you rip it up, you're out of work. Um, you're in pain. You could possibly lose some fingers. So part of what we're trying to do here is actually get some gloves. Okay, what we can do, there's there's two different kinds. Well, there's a bunch of different kinds, but the main thing here is there's the short cuff and gauntlet cuff. Short cuff is going to be right up where my watch is. Gauntlet's going to be way up here, and you can hear some pictures right here. So there's the short cuff, and there's more of the gauntlet cuff. The main thing here is just actually wearing gloves. Now, if you don't want to wear gauntlet cuffs because it's too hot or whatever it is, then get some short cuff. Now, there's leather. There's uh, uh, textiles. They can be perforated. They can be solid. The perforation is going to allow airflow. There's heated gloves. There's, there's so many different kinds of gloves. The main thing here is actually just wearing them, just wearing them. Um, in this situation, you know, if it's really wet out and it's really cold out, gloves would, would help out so much, especially with the tactile feel. You're able to actually grip the handlebars better. Okay, so your hands will be slippery. Okay, gloves have actual grip to them, so you can actually grip the handlebars, so we don't, um, you know, lose our hand on a turn, you know, but sliding it off, and also getting cold. You know, if your hands are cold, whose hands have ever been cold? Yeah, it's a little bit hard to move. Okay, so if you're trying to reach for that front brake, you're trying to reach for the clutch to shift, it starts becoming harder and harder and harder because you're not wearing gloves that will keep your hands warm. So wear gloves, keep your hands safe, especially if something like this happens where you start ripping your fingers off. Hopefully it doesn't when you wear actual gloves. All right, Storm 6R. Ooh, got cut off a little bit. Bro. Not a big deal. Now we're staggered. Are you serious? Or now we're staggered. Don't get close, because now we're going to get into the blind spot again. You don't need to see who they are. Dude. Just treat them as like a truck. You don't need to treat the... Okay, here we go. Let's just move on. Havel. I think we've seen this before. A little too close. Why did that happen? Write in the comments, guys. Write in the comments. How did that happen? Why did that happen? Write in the comments. Why did that happen? Let's go back just a little bit more. Write it in the comments. What do you guys think? So we're getting up to here. We're, look how close we are, right? Look how close we are. All of a sudden, just dumps the bike. Why do you think that happened? Wrong, wrong line to corner inches probably touched the front brake. A little bit too much front brake. Fast entry speed, grab brake. Yeah, I mean, just take a look at the space cushion here. We have a terrible space cushion. This space cushion is not going to allow us enough room to really do anything. So if somebody makes an abrupt movement, we're going to make an abrupt movement. We don't want to keep making abrupt movements. That's not good. So what we can do is practice. Let's go over here. What we can do is practice our braking. And this is motorcycle shifting. So who pushed the wrong button? Yeah, I think you pushed the wrong button. Let's go ahead and go back and get out of there. Okay. Who pushed the wrong button? We won't do that lesson for braking today. But the main thing here is uh, he slammed the front brake. Slam the front brake in the middle of the turn. There we go. Okay, we got to make sure we're in full gear. I think we got the right button here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So motorcycle braking basics. Uh, the main thing here is practice or progressive braking. But if you don't have enough space, to actually break in time, it's because our space cushion is too limited. We're making too many uh, choices with not enough room and not enough time. So we're slamming that brake to make up for that. So if we have a better space cushion, we can have better braking. And that's how we practice our progressive braking. Pick an area to where you can actually give yourself enough time and space to brake. Once you feel that weight transfer, okay, once you feel that weight transfer to that front tire, you can squeeze more and more and more. The main thing here is keeping your handlebars straight. So in the turn, it's pretty difficult. You're in the middle of the turn, and you're starting to squeeze it pretty hard. So if you have to, in the middle of a turn, you can still have it sort of turned a little bit, but when you start squeezing, go ahead and start straightening it up, and then you get that weight on the front tire, and you can squeeze a little bit more. Use the clutch lever, pull it in, because once you stop and you're still in the gear, you're probably going to stall, and you don't want to stall. Like I said, that weight transfer is going to really help you out. You're going to get more traction. You can actually squeeze it. But the problem is when people dump the bike, um, when they get to this point right here, When they get it right here, they freak out and they slam the front brake. And that's the problem. There we go. Crunch.
crumpled photo. Okay, we're having some fun going around the corner. Pretty, pretty decent speed. Are we gonna have road surface hazards in the way? We're we gonna dump the bike. Whoa, we have a roadway user in the way. This person is all over the road. Whoa. I don't know if this person's paying attention or if they're doing this on purpose, but if you see something like that, let them go. Roll off the throttle for about five minutes. I wouldn't say five minutes. Roll off the throttle just a little bit for like a minute. Um, this way that they're going, they're continuing to go, and if they do get into a head-on collision, you're not right next to them. Because if they get in head-on collision, let's say two turns, two, three turns ahead of you, you're going to either hear it or you're going to come up to it um, with a better space cushion, better knowledge of something like this happening. But if you're like, like right here and they got into a head-on collision, you're going to have to do a massive swerve because there's a lot of road surface hazards, a lot of road debris. You're going to have people in the way. You're going to have to swerve out of the way. So let the idiots be up front. Let the idiots be up front. That person, yeah, this person's probably drunk. Or diabetic. I don't know. And she Ooh, beautiful. Clip showing how important the proper gear is. This right could have ended completely different. Yeah, yeah, lots of, lots of issues. Oh, if you, I got hit by a car. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Let's see if we have any uh, obvious deformities. So that left leg looks okay, probably in some pain. Doesn't look like it's obvious, but this is how you, uh, you cut open their pants and see if there's any issues. So right leg seems to be moving pretty well. He's not wanting to move that left leg, though. Probably has injuries. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Can't really tell what happened because we don't see what happened. Um, I can't tell with the bike, but I have a feeling his left leg is, is not is not doing too well. You see how he's moving his right leg, but his left leg is kind of... He's using the ground as a splint, if that makes sense. The ground's not moving. His leg's against the ground. That's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, probably road rash on the wrist. You, yeah, you could see that right there. Probably put his wrist out. Uh, didn't have gloves. That's why we have gloves. Um, but his right leg's moving. His left leg may be hip, but yeah, he's using the ground as a splint. It's a natural body thing. But you see how the, there you go, he's moving his right leg. Terrible situation. Thankfully, we yeah, multiple broken bones. Hey. Oof. Let's move on. Hey, position for safety. Um, when we talk about planning our ride, we talk about good line of sight. We we're talking about uh, having a skate path and good space cushions. So right now we have an escape path, great line of sight, no space cushion. So this isn't the best position for safety, but I want you guys to see what a good line of sight and escape path looks like. We have great line of sight up in front. We can see what other vehicles are doing. And if we had to, we can accelerate through this escape path right here. Just not a good position because then, you know, once if the van turns left, once if the car in front of us turns right, we start having issues. A little boat. But, oh, what are you doing? Who opens their doors? Who opens their doors when traffic is... I, I... Is this like a normal thing? Yeah, you can smash your fingers. Ah, oh, man. You could break your finger doing that. Yeah. First thought he broke his finger. Okay. Хорошо, не разогнал. Смотри, дверь цела. It's a, it's a common thing where you live, uh, Amine. Without any signaling, the driver decided to test this biker's patience a bit. When he didn't like how the rider reacted, he decided to repeat the maneuver. So he did it again? Is he gonna open the door again? Wait, is this the same person? What's going on, man? Yeah, this is where like road rage starts happening, and it's like you know, just let the idiots be idiots. Homie, Rockies tried to pass on a double yellow. Unfortunately, the guy in front of him turned left. Which uh, how do we help? Ended up uh, rear-ending him, smacking the. People are walking. People are walking. That's good. Walking is good. It means their is heart okay? is still working. Lungs are still working. They got blood pressure. It means the musculoskeletal system, on, at least on the lower part of the legs, are good. He's okay? He didn't get hurt? No. Whoa, 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 one sec. Look at his mustache. I know, but that's man. He's okay? He didn't get hurt? Sweet. He's got a handlebar mustache. 
Very nice. Hurt? No. You come back on like a. So the bike looks damaged, but you know, like just walking up, we have that assessment, okay? right? Yeah. There you go. Are you okay? We have that assessment going on. Yeah. So hand is a little bit painful. Okay, but full gear, very nice. Just a little finger. Very nice. Go ahead. So at this point, when everyone's fine, you can move the bike out of the way. Because the last thing you want to do, or last thing you want, is a car to hit it and then they get injured. Because we're trying to prevent injuries here. So if everyone's fine, and there's able-bodied people, not the injured person, but let's say you, this is the camera guy, um, let's go ahead and move the bike. Let's take pictures. You know, have your buddy, t have, have them take pictures. Then move the bike. That's man. Brand new RR. Oof. Ay, 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 ay. Hey, let's uh, let's pick it up and get it out of the street at least, so people can cross. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, he's got a quad lock. Phone's still right. on it. Let's get it. <laughs> yeah. uh -oh, There's an error message. There's an error message on the bike. Already. Front parking lamp faulty. Have checked by a specialist workshop. All right, so the front parking lamp is 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 the only thing wrong with it. So uh, should be pretty good for resale. Moto wreck. Here we go. Okay, somebody's uh, getting in front of you. Not a big deal. They're making decisions because it's a left turn or right turn. They want to make a right turn. Pretty good. Not issue. You rolled off the throttle. Handled it. Maybe gave it a little bit of front. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Good job with the progressive braking. We just talked about that. Great job. Great job. So let's take a look at this. They're making a decision. So this is why positioning for safety is so important. Okay. So when we plan our ride, um, don't be right behind the vehicle. So this is right behind the vehicle. So this is our space cushion. This is our total stopping distance that we have to work with. Now, if we're off over here on the right side, we have our total stopping distance. We can just keep going. And so that's where positioning for safety really comes into play because you're also putting yourself in a good escape path and great line of sight. Oh, oh, there we go. And you notice right here, last second, we're able to start moving off into a better position. So if we put ourselves into that at the beginning, we're in a better spot uh, to handle situations like this. Not an issue. Prius. Always causing problems. Exactly, Apo. Prius is causing problems. Too fast, too soon. All right, side of the vehicle, guys. Intersections, orange stage, prepped and ready. Good job with the swerve. I don't know if you needed to do that, but you did it anyways. That's fine. It's an escape. Roll up the throttle maybe next time. And let them be in front. Pass them when it's safe. Uh, Velshrim. That's, that's the name, I think. All right, where's some gear? I see some. I don't see gear. Interesting spot. Move on, move on. Pay attention to what's in front. We're a little jerky on the, sh on the shifting and the throttle. Practice that. Nathaniel, here we go. In the side of the vehicle. Pretty, pretty decent away. I see that you had to use some progressive braking, but it's not that big of a deal. Hey guys, make sure you hit that like button. Let's get 200 likes on this video. Status red rides, okay? Moved over, G good job. Take a look at this. So side of the vehicle. We see it right here. We're going into orange stage. We're like, ah, I don't like it. But then they keep going. We're like, oh, I don't like it at all. We're going to go into red stage at this point. And we're going to swerve over into the other lane. Very good. That's exactly what I want you guys doing because there's not enough total stopping distance here. You're not going to be able to stop in time. So you have to do something else. And so we're going to switch over. Saw that did the head check, everything. Very good. Very good. Moved on. Status rides. I ride like an idiot, question mark. Okay. Side of the vehicle, they came out, they blew a stop sign. Yeah, yeah, I'd be I'd be pretty upset too. I'd be pretty upset too. You saved yourself then honked. That's very good. Uh-oh. Somebody get hit or they're doing some dumb stuff. Oh, somebody got hit. Yeah. Not much you can do here. Just take it nice and easy, nice and slow. So this right here, we're coming up. Let's take a look at this. So typically we're in yellow stage. So if you guys don't know what that, typically we're in yellow stage, we're good, relaxed, we're zoned in, we're just enjoying ourselves, you know, we're just riding around, and then all of a sudden we see something uncommon, we go into orange stage. 
So this is like a really good orange stage. Like we're cruising. We're just kind of getting through the situation. Once we get out of the intersection and we get back into normal mode. So right here, it's like, oh, okay, orange stage, huh? Hey, that's weird. Let's take it nice and easy. Let's not go fast. Let's not go crazy. Let's pay attention to road surface hazards. We're practicing our slow speed maneuvers here. Okay. So this is like all slow speed stuff. Now we gotta do a sharp left turn at slow speed. So right here, you're not thinking about, hey, I need to do counterweighting. I need to do my head checks. I need to do this. You're, you're looking at where the road is taking you because of where you need to go. And that's what we do here with the Smart Rider drills is that what you're doing is you're focusing on just making the pattern right here, but you're, you're actively and naturally doing the head tilt, doing, doing the body weight counter or counterweight. You're doing the throttle control, friction zone. You're doing all that stuff. And if you have trouble with some of these designs, because they, they do get pretty crazy, and that's, the, that's, par, that's part of it. They do get pretty crazy. Um, once you start failing at these, you start to recognize, hey, I need to work on my counterbalance. I need to get better at my friction zone and throttle control. I need to get better at looking where I want to go. I really do need to get my chin on my shoulder and look that way and really turn. This is the natural reason why you need to learn that. Because if you don't, you might dump the bike. You're going too slow. Thanks for watching, Tindy. Oh, you're welcome, Moto Stars. Thank you so much for having these videos. I appreciate it. But guys, we're going to be jumping into another video pretty soon. Pretty soon. There it is. If you enjoyed it, see you soon in the next video. Right safe. We got another video. How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing today? Uh, do the occasional white stage go away with time? It, it happens less and less and less. You're still gonna, I still get white staged here and there. And what I recognize what's happening is that I'm thinking about something completely different. Like I'm supposed to be driving, I'm supposed to be riding, but I'm thinking about uh, what's happening in at the live stream next week or whatever. Like if it's earlier today, it's like what's happening today in class? Um, what am I gonna eat later? Like I start thinking about all these other things and then I start, then I find out, hey, stop. Let's focus. And how do I focus? It's kind of like a, a mindfulness technique that I use. It's like, let's take a look at our side mirrors. Let's take a look at my speedometer. Let's take a look at where my hands are on the steering wheel or on the handlebars. Let's take a look at what, where my phone is and see what the GPS says coming up next. I bring myself out of my mind and into what's happening exactly here. You know what I mean? So that's, once you recognize that's happening and you're like, hey, I'm kind of like thinking of like, something completely different and you're like okay i reckon I, hey thoughts what's going on here let's focus on the ride boom you're taking control over it white stages when you're out of control of your thoughts but it happens it happens but it happens less and less and less the more you practice that great question well you're welcome hayden been riding for a while but uh, getting my first bike soon and your videos are great prep for the real world riding Hey, when you're driving, you could also do that too. I appreciate I appreciate the kind of words. Yeah, shoulder checks are a great way. Exactly, tall. I love the suggestions you guys give. Yeah, people try them out. If it doesn't work for them, it works for them. You know, whatever, whatever. Can we talk about 600cc first bike bros claiming 200 miles per hour on their 200, 2006 Jixxer? That's the real issue plaguing the bike culture right now. And bees and helmets. Yeah, those are all excuses. <laughs> Uh, what's your opinion on listening to music while riding? Can it be distracting? Maybe leave the music for when I'm more confident. You just answered your own question, Rad. Yeah. Um, I like listening to music, but I recognize when I first started riding, listening to music, it kind of took me out of the ride. Uh, thankfully, nothing happened. Um, I would I would have waited a little bit longer to listen to music. Yeah, sometimes I don't even listen to music. I have my, my earplugs in, and I just start riding. Uh, but I'd leave it until you're a little bit more confident. Yeah. Antenna thread. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Jazz or classical is great. Yeah. Yeah, because mu music can get you in a mood. So be careful what mood you want to put yourself in. Thank you, Florin. I appreciate that. Welcome to the Academy. Welcome to the Academy. Very nice. Welcome to the Academy. 
260 people in class right now. Click that like button. Let's get to 200, and we're going to jump right into this one. So we just need, like, you know, 45 more people to hit that like button. 45 more people to hit that like button. We're going to get started real soon. 63. Oh, shoot. We're, we're jumping up right there. Appreciate it, guys. Guys, share the videos, too. If you have friends that, that ride like idiots, maybe they should watch this. <laughs> It's Zeus. Hey, welcome to the road, man. Welcome to the club. 178 likes. That's what I'm seeing right now. 182 likes. Okay, we just need, uh, what, 18 more? I got some quick maths in my head. Quick maths. Love to see you guys at the Academy. Love to see you guys at the Academy. Let's see what this video looks like. Ooh, 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 there's a little dust up. We got some crashes going on there. Dude's walking, walking wounded. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Eight more likes. We're going to get started on this. Eight more people liking. Got your first bike on Sunday, 2008 Ninja 500R. I'm super excited to take the course in the spring. Hey, you're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to have a lot of fun. Thank you, Smeghead. Hello from Germany. How you doing? Three more likes, I see. Three more. I'm about to start driving a bike soon. Your videos are helpful. Hey, meet Constantinos Gaming. How you doing, man? Dan has brown stage every morning. Yes, I do. How does it feel to be replaced uh, on Netflix, uh, Geralt? All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead. Uh, we got 200 likes. Let's go ahead and hit this little button right here. Let's make sure uh, we know what's going on here. Oh, 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 didn't hit the record button. We, you know how we do it. Hit that record button. Three, two, one. Here we go. So we got some motorcycle crashes and close calls. We're going to figure out what happened, how they happened, and uh, hopefully prevent them ourselves. So if you're a brand new rider, let's keep watching. Hello, everyone. Today Hello. Another biker. Oh, don't like this positioning for safety. Okay, we're, what we're focusing on is positioning for safety, locating hazards. We're going to talk more about this stuff. But take a look at this. Ah. Not enough room to make Probably make adjustments. For you. It's good to learn from the mistakes of others. Get some render errors. And right. Render errors. Oh, hit a speed speed bump. A little speed wobble. So you hit the the transition. Got very lucky. We got a check engine light now. Got very, very lucky. So when I'm talking about positioning for safety, let's go ahead and take a look at what that means. Okay, so we're gonna get into that right here. So positioning for safety, we don't want to be right behind vehicles. Kind of like what's happening here. We're right behind the vehicle. Can't see past this vehicle. We're looking for a good line of sight. We're looking for good space cushions and an escape path. Okay, so that's a big thing here. So adequate space cushions, escape routes, and good line of sight so we can see what's happening. Because if somebody slams the brakes, especially if we're right behind a vehicle, we're not going to be able to stop in time. We have to make super quick adjustments. So the whole goal of this is to put ourselves in a position for safety and a position for success when it comes to having to do emergency swerving, emergency acceleration, emergency braking, whatever it is. But right here, what we have is that if this car slams the brakes, we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to do much. We're, we're, our reaction time is going to be terrible. We can swerve maybe. Hopefully we don't hit. Uh, we're not going to be able to stop in time. So we have very limited options, and we have to make adjustments based off the vehicle that's you know slamming the brakes right here. But if, if we're in a different lane position, like let's say right here, but we have a bigger gap between the vehicle and us, look at the line of sight now. Look at our escape path. That's what we're working on here. And what's happening with the speed wobbles, let's take a look. From the mistakes of we go onto a bridge. So if you're a brand new rider, be very careful about this. Don't accelerate super hard and turn when you're, when you're going over a bridge. Go over it nice and straight. Maintain a good speed, which is whatever the speed limit is. Try to avoid any big spots and be a little bit loose on the handle, handlebars and the grips. Go ahead and squeeze the tank with your knees because then what's happening here is the suspension so you're turning like this, suspension's trying to, uh, there we go, it's trying to uh, maintain good contact, uh, tire contact with the ground. And once it hits the bump, it's starting to do this. So if we have it nice and straight and it hits the bump, it's going to do this. So when it does this, it's trying to correct itself and it's being translated into the handlebars. So it's doing this now. So go over it nice and straight so it can go nice and straight up and down. Let it do, it, let it do its job. Pretty scary situation. Once it get once it starts, you're kind of kind of stuck, kind of screwed. 
Some people say accelerate to lift the front end, so less weight on the front suspension. Some people say apply the brakes. Some people say don't do anything. You're kind of up to physics at this point. Here we go, Evil Lincoln. That's what I'm talking about, terrible space cushion. What's if they slam the brakes? You know what I mean? Ooh, what? Whoa, was not anticipating that. Oh, man. Woo, baby. That was not good. I was riding the BMW motorcycles. The guy in front of me was daydreaming and rode off the highway. So white staged, it sounds like. A little bit white staged. Ooh, up into the grass. Villa Mobile Nord, thank you for the donation. I appreciate that. appreciate that. So he went off the road. How do we save him? Look, he's walking wounded. His heart's working. His lungs are working. All right, no blood, no broken bones. No blood pressure's working. Ooh, collarbone. You're good. A little bit of a collarbone right. issue. I think we've seen this one. We'll move on. But that box. Whoa! So at this point, road surface hazards, but it's in the air. So we're going to have to swerve. We don't want that hitting us. Now it's cardboard. It's still going to knock us around. This okay. ray found out. So good job avoiding that. Secured cargo can be, but thanks to his quick and efficient response. Shane, how you doing, man? An accident. Hoping to do some local stuff. Oh, oh no. Hit some drywall. Oh, he's got some more. Yeah, pull over. Good job. Good job uh, getting yourself out of that situation. He managed to avoid Hit a accident. drywall. There's a drywall piece floating through the air. Smack. Look at all that gypsum. Look at all that. So good job with this rider recognizing. So we were in this lane. See something uncommon right here. And you see him already starting to move. So we're kind of getting distracted looking at this. But look at the rider now. Look at the rider and see where they put themselves in a better position for safety. This is a great video for position for safety. Located the hazardous situation. Assessed if it's a relevant threat. And is now navigating an active threat. Because it's going to be in his lane. Has to switch over. So starts to switch over. He's already almost in the next lane because now we have massive threats ahead of us. It's zoomed in, but this is how it feels because we're going at high speeds. And it's like, you know what? Let's just get off on the side of the road and check our bike, check our pantalones for any uh, any brown or anything like that because that would have scared the crap out of me. All right. Adam Buzz Diker. That's the name. Red is going to turn green and then we're going to low side. Let's see. So we're turning left. There's stuff in the road. Yeah. I think... I don't know what, this is what I typically see. I mean, it's, it's starting to, especially if there's no traffic. Typically when you see a video like this and there's a bunch of traffic, maybe somebody causing the accident. If there's no traffic, more than likely it's a road surface hazard. So let's take a look at this. So the ground looks a little bit weird. It's not that great of a ground. Let's go ahead and go nice and wide in our turns. Let's not go cut across and then have to turn sharp again. Let's go nice wide turn, okay? All of a sudden, we see that there's a median missing. It's kind of a weird spot. I don't know what this is all about. They have a cutout in the road. And we we started to dump the bike already. So I don't know exactly what happened. That rear tire lost traction. And then we fell into that gap. So go over it. Not go over it. Your goal is not to hit uh, the road surface hazards, but go nice and wide around the turn. And then once you're straight, go ahead and accelerate. Wear gear just in case. What a weird spot. What a weird spot. All right, average LA driver. Uh-oh, write in the comments if you're from LA. Is, is this is this normal, whatever's gonna happen? Green, okay. Are we gonna be right next to the other vehicle? Oh, they're in the wrong lane. <laughs> they're in the wrong lane. <laughs> they're in the wrong lane. Wasn't paying attention, not doing very good. Not doing very good. JT Fresh going pretty fast. Okay, 54, I'm assuming miles per hour in the neighborhood. Let's slow it down. It, it might be 50. Who knows? I have a feeling this is like a 40, maybe a 35 mile an hour road. Okay, we got side of the vehicle. Okay, let's just go and start it. I know I keep talking about it. Okay, going 60. Okay, there's our buddy up ahead. So we're going to have to slow down, slam the brakes. At this point, keep going straight. Yeah, don't try to make that turn. Go straight. Talk to your buddy on your cardo pack talk. Link in the description for 20% off. But um, at this point, we're right here. We're in yellow stage zoned in, but we're going too fast. So one of the things that we can do is actually slow it down for, for the whole situation. Once we see like the side of the vehicle popping in right there, 
or in stage. We need to be prepped and ready. But now we're in a spot where we're going too fast, so we can't swerve right, we can't swerve left. What are we going to do? We're going to have to either accelerate past in an escape path or apply a good progressive braking. At this point, we should be progressively braking because you could slow down enough to where you can actually make an adjustment. But he's just rolling off the throttle. Now we're applying the brakes. We saw the side of the vehicle ahead of time. We did. We're already going too fast. Our buddy went down that way. You can see him over there. So this is why you're talking on your cardos. So you're like, hey, I missed the turn. I'll see you. But you just keep going. Make the next turn or do a U-turn right here. Slow it down. Do a U-turn. Just too fast. Just too fast. This Ooh, whoa, buddy. Speed just before her rise and turn put himself in a very difficult situation. Crest of the hill. What's on the other side? What's on the other side? Oh, just uh, going to go ahead and crash. Yeah. Couldn't see what's happening. Slam the brakes, possibly. Hopefully, we're doing okay. You all good, man? Not wearing a lot of gear. Not the best situation. Checking the bikes if we can make it home. Yeah. Clutch lever is kind of... That clutch lever, you see how the clutch lever is a little bit difficult to like squeeze? Clutch lever is supposed to squeeze in pretty easily. So there's more than likely something going on with that cable. Let's take a look at the clutch lever. Yeah, that's that's it's not supposed to be doing that. It's not supposed to be doing that. Let's take a quick look at this right here. So our buddy, our buddy decided to go a little bit fast, okay? I get it. I get it. We're having some fun. It's like look. At, it's like a look at me thing. It's like a look at me thing. And we, we we don't play the look at me thing when we're riding. No, we don't do that. We're we're just trying to get home. Okay. We're taking at such a high speed. But look at the crest of the hill. What's around the corner? Situation. And the corner is the vertical, right? You can't see what's around it. You can't see what's around it. And all of a sudden, he can't slow down enough to make the turn panics a little bit and go straight. And then we crash start having some issues you all good, man? got very lucky what's up zach attack how you doing how you doing zach attack t swain here we go watch out okay a little bit of a blind spot open lane pattern okay i didn't see the open lane pattern right away because look at all the stuff up ahead it's a little bit like Weird, right? You can't see much. You see what the, the hazard is right in front of us. And so we have this big open lane, but once we get a little bit closer, you can recognize that there's cars stuck here and there's, there's open. There's no one in our lane. And so, yeah, they're going to switch over. They're not looking in their mirrors, guys. That's, the, that's one of the biggest problems. They're just not looking in their mirrors. Inattentional blindness, just you know, poor education when it comes to driving, whatever it is, distractions, whatever it is. What is it that we have control over? We have control over recognizing these patterns we have control over putting ourselves in a different position if we need to and so we can maintain the staggered position we're coming up to an intersection anyways let's go ahead and slow it down and go in orange stage it's like okay yeah we got a little bit close at this point you see the tires going over the line let's go ahead and do some progressive braking we're gonna have to slow down anyways let's go ahead and progressively brake and if we're like oh we're going too slow to get to the intersection give it a little bit of throttle we're on a bike it's fun <laughs> you're you're denying yourselves the the opportunity to utilize the primary controls on your motorcycle. You're you're gonna have fun applying some brakes and giving a little bit of throttle, applying some brakes, giving some if you're in a position where you're like, I don't like doing any of that stuff, drive a car that's automatic or drive a Tesla with uh with a self-driving. It's fun utilizing the controls. <laughs> don't fight for the lane. Don't fight for the lane. It's not very smart. Yeah. It's not good. You'll lose. Looks a little busy. Oh, open lane pattern. Put ourselves in a better position. There you go. Okay, open the space cushion. We're moving on. You Don't get pissed. see me then behind you when you dove out right in front of me. Wasn't speeding. No, it wasn't speeding. You just oh, jumped right out, lady. Everybody says exactly the same thing when they make a mistake. Very good for him. Didn't get pissed. We saw this one before. Nice little uh, lane filtering situation. Indian motorcycle. Very nice with a quad lock. 
J Moto six one seven. Completely failed to signal the maneuver, but still overtaking in this manner, the bike is somewhat okay. super. Different position for safety. You can see good line of sight, situation. good escape pass. Watch out for this open spot. We've seen this one before, I think, and he just kind of dumps the bike a little bit of a panic. Thankfully, his hands didn't get ran over by that car, but now we have issues here because that car didn't hit you. You failed to maneuver your motorcycle, and so at the end of the day the insurance is going to say that you crashed into the parked car. This is why it's very important, right? Bikes aren't toys. They're weekend escapes. Exactly. <laughs> Good morning, daredevil. Turn into a toddler every day again. As a toddler, you, you rode motorcycles? Interesting. California drivers are the worst. Let's take a look. This is an intersection. What are we going to have here? It's a green light. Do we go? Do we go? Okay, let's do it. Are they going to cross into our lane? <laughs> Write in the comments why you think so. I'll tell you why I thought so. I'll tell you why I thought that person was going to cross into our lane. Why do you think that person's going to cross into our lane? Do you, okay, so darkness. It's just too dark. That's a good uh, that's a good option. I have a feeling this bus got into the into their lane. The bus went into their lane. They were in, they were in our lane, went to their lane, made a sharp turn into it and decided, "You know what? I'm not going to get stuck behind a bus. I'm going to go ahead and switch over." They didn't see us because we have one tiny little headlight. It's at night, so the darkness that at nighttime is a very that's that's a it's a factor. Didn't see us, didn't care, didn't look, whatever, whatever. They want to move over. That's what I feel happened. What do you guys think? Write in the comments. Yeah. They could have straight up wanted to switch just because they wanted to. Who, who knows? They suck at maybe uh, turns to the left. You know? They don't know how to... They're probably the kid that in school just thought it was funny not to draw within the lines. And they're like, you know, 16 years old, high school. This is fun. You know, I'm not talking, you know, toddlers. I'm talking close to an adult. And they just never learned. Good citizen, here we go. Same thing, probably. Whoa, did we do that, though? No, we got pushed out. We got pushed out. Same thing. Same thing. So we have lane filtering. Or I'm sorry, lane splitting, because they are they are moving. You guys get pissed when I say the wrong one. There's that open lane. Good job with the progressive braking, so good job. Good job. Let's not do anything else. Let's move on. Too fast, too soon. Oh, all over the place. How much you want to bet that's a teenage driver? How much you want to bet that's a teenager or an adult child? That is somebody that's like, we're going to have some fun getting into the driveway. You know what I mean? So at this point, you see something uncommon. Just kind of sit back and wait till they make an actual decision, right? Or grandpa living in the moment. He's having some fun. Having some fun. And I wouldn't do that because now you're running into issues when you're hitting the bumps and, and destroying your, your uh, suspension. Maybe the brakes are gone. Ooh, nighttime. Write some, write some uh, comments. There you go. We got some hazard. Or not hazard. We got some uh, our brights on. So look at it. We have our uh, low beams, I think. High beams. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, we had our high beams on. This is a great this is a great video to showcase what what braking does. So he's applying the brakes, the headlights are doing this, and then when he applies the brakes, they go down. And so then it's actually shining on the road a little bit more. So what we don't see is this person uh, perceiving and then reacting to the hazard before we can actually see it because it's a video and whatnot, and they're living in the moment. So right now, the uh, the headlights, he's got the high beams on, it looks like. Um, that's what I'm assuming that is because I don't think he's in neutral. And so here's like the low beam. So high beam, low beam. And then once he applies the brakes, let's, let's take a look at it. Let's leave that on. So applies the brakes. The high beam is now right here. And here's the low beam. So the brakes made weight transfer the front tire. The light is going with it, right? Suspension's compressing. 
So now we have more weight on the front tire, so we're able to do better and better progressive braking. Uh, so they anticipated and saw um, this hazard right here, which looks like a coyote. Looks like a little coyote. That or a javelina. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. That is that is literally uh, a visual representation of the front end diving down when you apply the brakes. Let's take a look. Right there. There it is. And this is I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of I'm kind of uh, happy about this one because you're gonna see it right now, accelerating and it's equal. There we go. Dives down and you can tell when he releases the brakes too. Now it's up. Very cool. Good job. Bike is life on the Kentish roads. How you doing? Typically he's in the chat. Are you in the chat today? We had a side of the vehicle pop out. Where's some gear, buddy? Fat and furious. Oh, I think we've seen this one. He dumps the bike, rides it a little bit. It's pretty fun. There was some oil. Cops saw it. Yes, they saw it. I was able to skid and slide. Let's get 250 likes on this video, guys. Let's get 250 likes. We're at 219 right now. 219. Let's get 220. Very nice. So it was a little slip and slide. Hopefully, I uh, didn't get in trouble. Because at the end of the day, his life is, or his, yeah, his life got altered a little bit for the negative. Let's not add on a little bit more. Uh, I think there's a learning lesson already applied when it comes to completely damaging your bike. You know, that's how I see it. That's how I see it. If anything, maybe the cop could make them, you know, put some kitty litter on that stuff and sweep it up and scoop it out. It'd be kind of fun. I would do that instead of getting a ticket. What would you guys do? If the cop said, hey, if the cop said, hey, here's some kitty litter and a shovel, clean it up, or I'm writing you a, a reckless uh, reckless driving uh, ticket and we're going to impound your broken motorcycle, what would you do? Write in the comments. I'd, I'd clean it up. Intersection. Whoa. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. There you go. Finally stopped. Jeez, dude. Pay attention. Good job. Intersection. Orange stage. Look at the road surface. A little bit of a change. Ooh, good job with the braking when that was happening. Okay, another uh, roundabout going through. There's the side of the vehicle. This is where we start going a little bit slow. We're practicing our slow speed maneuvers because we have uh, lots of hazards, not a lot of space cushions that are left and right. Um, we have old ladies walking across the road, not getting pissed off. Very good. That's somebody's grandmother. You know, Catman. Here we go. Side. Oh, left turner. Good swerve. Get back in your lane. Go ahead. Once you get past it, go ahead and flip them off. I see. I, I feel that. I feel that. Martin Gold. Interesting camera. Good job moving over. Good job finding a better position for safety. Gun time. All right. NRA. Open lane pattern. There, yeah, there it is. Good job with the braking and swerving over a little bit. Very good. We see that all the time. Let's go ahead and increase that space cushion. Can't tell because of the GoPro or whatever. Must see shorts. Okay, position for safety. They're switching over. Good job with the braking. Yeah, they were about to switch over. Whoa. Was that warranted at all? Nah, dude, don't worry about that. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. No, just keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. I received a rude surprise from a driver on my ride the other night. I pulled over in a parking area on the side of the road, which was fully legal. After a minute or so, a car pulled up behind me and started blasting their horn. Just take off. I already know the answer to this one. Just get out of there. I, I'm sorry, but if I ever got into like a road rage situation, I'm like, I just got to pull over and they follow me. Dude, I'm gone. I'm gone. Oh, this is just they're they're thinking you're in the lane. We're on the we're still on the road. Is he pointing at the parking? I am so confused. Somebody write in the comments. This is like not typical. Like, dude, like maybe park somewhere somewhere else. All right, uh, thank you, MotoStars, for, for such a great video there. Um, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. 
Let's get to 7,000 likes. Let's see if we can get 7,000 likes on this video. I'll give you guys more pizza next time if you do that. All right, with that said, hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and I'll see you guys later. Hey, that was a video right there. That was a video. We got one more. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh. How are you guys doing today? We got some new people in here. It looks like... So, right... Yeah, actually, write in the comments if you're new. If you're new, go ahead and take a seat. Go ahead and take a seat. Uh, grab yourself a slice of pizza. Uh, Shadow, how are you doing? You're new. Good to have you here. Uh, so, what we do is we hit that like button. We hit that like button to sign in. So, user new, Shane new, Arasaki new, Italian potato. I love it. Uh, Apo, how you doing? Alex, just subscribe. Blake, how you doing? Yeah, so what we do is we hit that like button uh, to sign into class. And then you can get your slice of pizza. Sometimes we have donuts. It's good to have you here. It's good to have you here. Armand's, how you doing? Hayden's, new, new to the stream. Okay, Gizmo, I've seen you around. You got a nice beard, buddy. You got a nice beard. But uh, yeah, guys, take a seat. It's weird. Nobody wants to sit up front. I get it, you know, because I'm going to call on you. Pedro, how you doing? Old but noob to the lives. Good to have you here. Good to have you here. First time watching stream, but love the channel, Tim. Thank you so much. Guys, we do have the MTC Rider Academy, if you didn't know what that is. Um, the MTC Rider Academy is what we do here um, as like our subscription service where we have courses uh, and we have a bunch of stuff going on. So it's 120 a year, but we have our courses here. This is the basic Smart Rider course. Um, you get to learn all the defensive road strategy that we talk about here. So all the color code stages, the plan method, we uh, what kind of gear you should get, um, you know, picking the helmet, gloves, jacket, pants, and boots, basic rider skills. So if you want to learn how to do offset weave, so anything you're getting ready for the MSF or anything like that, we have it right here. Common riding scenarios, so nighttime, in the streets, interstate, mountains, uh, neighborhoods, getting started. And then we're talking about the rescue stuff, which is uh, how do we uh, basically help somebody in, in a motorcycle crash. On top of that, you're getting the Smart Rider drills. So this is the, the booklet version of it right here. Um, but lots and lots of drills. So if you don't know what that looks like, you know, we got some parking lot stuff. You only need a 60 by 40 parking lot, which is not that big. Um, and it's all standardized. And you get the downloadable version for your phone. You get a whole bunch of stuff. And speaking of downloads, I mean, outside of the weekly webinars, which we're doing, you get the MTC library. So you're actually able to get the rescue card, the rescue booklet, the drill booklet, everything that you would need to kind of get started. And uh, that stuff usually costs quite a bit on the store, but uh, you get it as a member here. So sign up, link in the description. You love the booklet, Frank? Hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Link's in the description for um, how to, to get to there. But in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the chat. Frank, did, did you did you get one without signatures? No, I sign every single one before I, I pack it away. What do you think about city riding with minimal gear? I live in a hot country right now. It's 36 to 40 uh, Celsius and impossible to wear any armor in the city. They do have armor only and so if you want to wear just like a regular t-shirt regular shorts with armor only i don't recommend it but you're going to at least minimize and mitigate some impacts you're not you're, you're you're going to get road rash though if you do crash but if you want to minimize impacts there you go you're going to have some you got to do the risk management yourself on that one yeah uh tom segura yeah yeah um he's my brother he's my older brother way older brother uh-huh has the autograph nice nice but guys what we do here if you're brand new what we do here is uh we do after action reviews so we're trying to figure out what happened we're gonna watch what happened figure out what happened as best as we can with our opinions um and we're gonna try to not to do what they did or if they do something well we're gonna do what they did uh, we're trying to learn we're trying to get rid of the bad and take what's good that's all we're trying to do here that's all we're trying to do here. So let's go ahead and jump into this one. I hit the record button. You guys get to see these on weekends, um, but you get to see them early when you do when you when you show up to the class. Okay. I'm writing a script for when Dan's safety writers meet Maxers Madmen at Daytona. Oh geez. 
Your bike instructor showed me your channel, and now I can't stop watching. Love the content. Armands, that's pretty cool. I love it when instructors share. It means I'm doing something right, right? Anyways, we got to get started. Hit the record button. Three, two, one. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. This is a Moto Stars video. Ooh, almost, almost hit them. Dodging some road surface hazards like pedestrians. Let's not do that. That's not good. Let's take a look. Today we were All right, having some fun with the buddies with uh, some rabbit ears. It's safe because anything can happen. All over the place, but you know, we're having some fun. Oh! Okay, somebody with a probably mental illness. Probably a little bit of a mental illness going on there. R6 Ninja, good job avoiding them. Oh! Open lane pattern, wasn't paying attention, didn't even see the car, but you saw that the car was speeding, right? Yeah, that's what happens when we're on motorcycles. We start to go, uh, we start hauling booty and we get pissed off at the car not seeing us, but the car didn't see the other car because they're going too fast. Probably saw the headlights, but just didn't anticipate how close they were. So be very careful with that. That could have been us. New to the channel. Al nice, Alva. Thank you so much. Nick Tim, here we go. We're in low side. There it is. Uh, don't go so fast around corners. Make sure your tires are properly inflated, have good tread. Road surface hazards can take your, your traction away from you. He's on Navi's. Let's not rush it around corners on Navi's too hard, okay? We're we having some fun in a parking lot. Okay, we're gonna go around the corner. Let's see how we're doing, slow speed maneuvers. Good job with the braking, because it easily had the handlebars turned and applied the brakes and fell over. Strained up the handlebars and saw this thing. Very good. This is what we do when we practice our smart rider drills. Good job. Imagine if we were speeding around the corner. Would have had an issue. Would have had an issue. This Ooh, road surface hazard of rain. It's very important to avoid painted road markings, which are very slippery, especially in this one. And it's concrete. It's concrete, too. So he's going nice and slow. Lost some traction. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Ah! That's probably how he lost the mirror. Yeah, there's the mirror. It's on the ground. That's how he lost the mirror. Right, tall boy? All right, PD cam. Oh, police. Undercover. Ooh, open lane pattern. Open lane pattern. We switched over and watched we get pulled over because we did something like that. No, good job, man. Road rage. Two wheel fool. Hit a bump? No. Who's, who are we road raging with? Another motorcyclist or a car? Dude. What the f*** are you doing? Chill out. Hey, chill out. I don't pass people in, in the same lane. I don't pass another motorcyclist in the same lane. Um, time for this today, my man. No, dude, don't. The guy probably has a gun or something. So I don't pass people in the same lane, but is that what he did? Yeah, he did. But still, it doesn't warrant, it doesn't warrant this reaction. If somebody passes me in the same lane, I don't do this. So that's straight up, yeah, that's straight up road rage. What the f*** are you doing? Chill out! Hey, chill out! Yeah, there's no reason to, like, to continue. If you were going to go straight right here anyways, just continue going straight. Let the idiot be an idiot. Um, let him go home and punch walls, and, you know, punch, you know, holes in the wall. You know, whatever it is. I got time for this today, my man. All right. XL bow. That's what I use my phone for. Right there, GPS. Oh, I don't do that, though. A little bit too far. A little bit too far. Make sure we're wearing full gear. So acquire and use personal protective equipment. You can still be a smart rider and stunt. According to Wikipedia, black is the darkest color, the result of the absence or complete absorption of visible light. Very interesting. Uh, we have a new... We got a tip of the day. Okay. A little weird. Let's go ahead and move on. Make sure you wear full gear. And he blew up. Okay, good to know. Okay. It's really hard to understand. Watching that Mustang. Driver who hit a bike for some unknown reason. Furthermore, the rider reported that the driver didn't even stop. Yeah, I'm keeping it. Oh, oh. We had the car behind us, kind of all over the place. Whoa! He's just being a, a, a jerk. Thankfully, the rider didn't crash. Oh, so he was adjusting that. Okay, not a big deal. He's, he's maintaining lane position. 
Oh, they were just hauling booty to get into that left. Terrible driving. Terrible driving. There we go. Timothy F. Up Day. Okay, side of the vehicle. Uncommon thing. They're in our lane. Switch over, switch over. Good job. Handled the situation. Wasn't rec uh, recognizing it was a one-way because of the median and just did it. But we recognized this person was not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And we got out of it. Very good. Very good. Nick Williams, here we go. Okay, what do we got here? We're in, oh, side of the vehicle, please. Oh, dude, Jesus. Good job with the braking. Good job with the braking. You couldn't see that. You couldn't see that. Whoa. So we see it here. Now, when I drove an ambulance for many years, we don't just go. We do have to stop. With lights or sirens, lights and sirens, anything and everything, we have to stop to make sure it's clear that we can go. What it, all the lights and sirens is doing is asking permission. That's it. We're just asking permission with our lights and sirens. Now there is some legal stuff and everything, but it's like we're not sitting here like, hey, uh, call it in, motorcyclists with with these four, you know, five letters and numbers, their license plate, call it in. Let's they didn't stop. No, we don't. We don't care. There's too many things going on. This this ambulance driver did a terrible job. Terrible job. He just went. Just went. I don't care if you have somebody in the back. You're supposed to stop and 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 not cause further uh, issues. But that that motorcycle rider, take a look at the front end suspension. Watch him like kind of just dive in. He is applying really good progressive braking, and he's getting that weight on that front tire. And then he's even applying more once he has that weight on that front tire. And that's why the back end flies up a little bit. But if you notice, the front end didn't slip, uh, slip, sl slip out. Because if he slammed the brakes, he wouldn't have had a lot of weight on the front tire, which would have made it to where he didn't have enough traction. It would have slid out. So once he gets that braking and that weight on that front tire, it is stuck. It is stuck. And that's what tires are supposed to do. And that's why it's, they work so well. And that's why you practice it so you understand. And once he gets stuck, he puts more in that front end and goes like this. Perfect braking. Exactly, Noel. Look at this. Watch. You see that back end just dump back down? Yeah. There's so much weight on that front tire. Very good. Great job. Saved yourself. Idiot driver. The ambulance guy. And I say ambulance driver. I'm not even going to call him an EMT. He's an ambulance driver. I know some EMTs don't like that. But he's getting that. He's getting that. If you're an EMT, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, be careful out there. Bikers, cagers, do not pay attention. Okay. Hey, look. Wasn't paying attention, moved over, handled it, move on. At first, Open lane. He decided to okay, switched to over. When while overtaking the good position for say ah, very good job with the positioning. You can see around, now we're gonna move over. Don't get pissed. Don't get pissed. Don't get pissed off. They just did their thing. I think he wants to see the mirror. Okay, we're getting a little bit close. Did he get a little tippity tap? No? Dude, get over it. Is that a Prius too? Get over it. Move on. Move on, dude. Ay, 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 ay. Move on. Move on. You're on a motorcycle. He's in a car. Terrible day for them. Okay. Interesting use case for the phone mount. Beautiful looking area. This is where you go nice and slow and just enjoy the view. Nice and slow, enjoy the view, crest of the hill, slow speed maneuvers. Oh, we lost. Oh, shifted wrong gear. No, we're going, we're flintstoning it backwards. Aye. This is why we got to maintain good friction zone throttle control. Cause you, if you're like in third gear and you're supposed to be like in first or second, you can still make it work. Get used to downshifting doing that. And then really play with that friction zone throttle control. That sucks. Lower gears when you're going up hills like that. So we got a biker kind of jumping around. Oh, we have something weird stuff in the road. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Oh no. Is the rider walking? Good. Rider's walking. So I say this all the time. We can do it. We can do an assessment. We don't even have to talk to the person yet. What the information we're gathering right now is we're gathering mechanism of injury. So more than likely we can have back injuries, leg injuries. Um, but the moment we see the person walking, that means their legs are working, right? 
It means their blood pressure is working, so we're getting blood to the brain, which is allowing uh, the body to actually move and be conscious. Um, our lungs are working because he's able to walk around. He's not choking or he's not like, <gasps> can't breathe. No, he's actually doing stuff. His heart is still working. He's pumping the blood, blood pressure and everything. We have volume and everything. Um, yeah, organs are working. What we can have is a traumatic brain injury. So he could have, uh, he could have a headache. Um, when we talk about this right here on the back of your rescue card that you get when you, when you buy um, a rescue pack right here. So there's the rescue card. It comes with it. Uh, what we need to be watching out for is head injury symptoms. And he could have pain. He could have pain uh, for his back and everything like that, but head injury. So if he's disoriented, a little bit of nausea, uh, he's vo hopefully he's not vomiting, but he might have just that headache. Um, you can see him when he's walking around, maybe he has a, like, a lack of balance or whatever like that. And you can get a traumatic brain injury from just shaking your head super hard. Uh, actually, take that back. Shake your head really hard, and you're going to feel your brain hurt. But if you smack your head, you can have a traumatic brain injury. And that's going to be like a concussion all the way to like something penetrating your skull into your brain, okay? So make sure uh, when you see somebody like this, do your little assessment, you see what he's doing, don't let him back on the bike, even though he's not gonna be, uh, if he has a TBI. That's a long story short, right? It wasn't even short, that's what she said. Walking around, doing well. Doesn't look like he's gonna need help. So right now what we're doing is we're adding to the situation. Oh, 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 good swerve. Good swerve, good swerve. Yeah, I underestimate your head shaking abilities. Yeah, they almost hit you. Why would you do that? Do what? Come around in front of me like that. I was only crashing the side of it, like literally on the side of you. Oh my gosh. You almost killed me. I was literally in that turn. I you didn't see dog. you. I made that look. You weren't there, and then you came from nowhere. Okay, it was still your fault, right? I was literally already swerved in front of you. I'm like, oh my god. Because oh if I would have hit you, that would have been like, you would have been hit, I would have been bad probably. Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. That's why I'm like, what the hell? I just want to make sure you're okay. After you just hear about life, so I see my life. And Good job for him. Oh my god. I always had a heart attack myself. Okay, I feel like I'm a jerk because you're okay. okay. We're good. Uh, I hope you guys have a good day. You too. We're good. Okay. Very good. So what I see here is that she did not see him. Okay, so we're, we're looking at two different perspectives here. We see, the, we see this perspective. We see this perspective. So he's having to swerve out of the way. So she, she crossed in front of traffic. Okay, whatever it is. We swerved out of the way. We saw the incident, right? We pull over, we're right in front of our group. Pull over, say hi. So I, you almost hit me. Correct. I didn't see you. Possibly correct. We're talking about inattentional blindness. So we have two people telling their truth. These both these people are correct in what they see and what they feel and what the and, and everything. Our goal is to find out where are we aligned. We both didn't want to hit each other. Perfect. We have something in common here. We almost hit each other. Perfect, we have something in common here. We have two different perspectives. Perfectly fine, because we're allowed to have that. You don't have to see what I saw. I don't have to see what you saw. But we need to understand that, yes, they have a different perspective. I didn't see you. Why would you do that? Do what? Now, it's very easy to get defensive and agitated, especially when she has that emotional response. She has that very high pitch. She's, she's getting, getting angry. He's doing pretty well. So she has an emotional uh, backing behind her words. It's very easy to get defensive on that. So why would you do that? Do, and why would you do that? So she's putting it back on him. Okay. So he's at, he's putting it back on her. Do what? Come around in front of me like that. So she could have started off with that. Didn't do that. That's fine. Our job as the one that are calm and collected, um, especially when we almost died, right? Calm and collected to, uh, basically keep the, the conversation going if we wanted to talk to him, but have it more productive. Uh, so she's saying coming around in front of me like that. Okay, that's her perspective. I was only crashing the side of it, like literally on the side of you. Oh. There we go. So now he says that. We're having a conversation here, guys. Oh my God, you oh my almost... Gosh. You almost killed me. I was... So she's now recognizing, oh, okay. Starting to, Things are starting to come out. Now he's saying, this is how I feel. You almost killed me. I was literally... In the turn? In the, I okay. didn't see you. So I didn't see you once again. 
Okay, not a big deal. Not a big deal. She didn't see you. So at this point, if you're the motorcycle rider, you're, you just voiced what happened to you. Saying it again and again and again and again and again is how you get into an argument. Because obviously they either didn't hear you, they're not listening to you, or they're misunderstanding you. She's also now saying, again, I didn't see you. So now we're kind of at a standstill. We can just keep yelling, I didn't see you. We can start yelling, you almost killed me. I didn't see you. I almost killed me. And, it, and then it just escalates. At this point, once you hear the same thing twice, three times, it's like, okay, we're in this weird pattern. Let's go ahead and stop. Let's go ahead and figure out what's going on. We're both okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the situation now where we're in. We're not living in the past anymore. Where are we at right now? We're okay. We're safe. And I think that's what he's starting to do right here. I made that look, you weren't there, and then you came from nowhere. Okay, it was still your fault, right? Yeah, you could do that if you want, but that, that was a very, that was a, that was a, that was a very risky maneuver, because typically that's going to piss someone off if you say something like that. Uh, we, we already understand it's, it was their fault, right? I was literally already swerved in front of you. I'm like, oh my God. So now she's starting to realize, this is like the third time, it's like, oh my gosh, oh my God, okay, let's, we're starting to calm down a little bit, which I'm very proud of her for calming down. Because it is a stressful situation. Oh if I would have hit you, that would have been like, you would have been hit, I would have been bad probably. Yeah, and so she would have been hit. So uh, once he hits this side right here, we can have compartment intrusion, which can actually damage her and have some shearing of the organs and have some issues when it comes to uh, basically anything inside here. So, um, yeah, very lucky for everyone. Yeah, and he probably eh, maybe would have been dead, but open book fracture, I tell you guys, don't Google it. But if you want to, traumatic open book fracture, and you'll see what I mean. Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. That's why I'm like, what the hell? So she's trying to, to find common ground right here. So she just validated what he just said. So she's like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, like, right here. Bad, probably. So he's saying what's, what's probably hap what could have happened. Oh, yeah, exactly. Hey, she validated you. She validated you. She validated your perspective. She validated the situation. She's saying it how she says it. That's why I'm like, what the hell? So she's, she's showing her emotion with a, a very scary situation. So right now we're on common ground. This is very good. I was going to make sure you're okay. Perfect. De-escalated even more. Good job, dude. So this is a Judeo CAA. I don't know if it's all combined or whatever, but good job, man. Good job. I, after you scared my life, so I see my life and yours. Oh, heart attack. Oh, my God. So now they're, they're, now they're becoming aligned, right? Now they're, now they're coming together. We got past what we just, you know, happened. And we're just like, now we're here. We're two humans trying to figure out what happened. We're both kind of like, this is stressful, okay? The one thing that you can do is is really, like, lower your tone. I get it. He's yelling because he's through his, his helmet. You know, it's hard to hear. Um, when I had my headset on, it, I would be yelling into the mic. That's why I use this now. It's open so I can actually hear stuff. I can hear myself talk. But, yeah, um, good job, man. I almost had a heart attack myself. See how we have more in common, right? This rider has more in common with this driver, um, and that's, that's how we are too. It's just mistakes, guys. It's mistakes. We have to control over our, our, we have to try to control ourselves. So if he didn't swerve and didn't practice the swerves, going to red stage during that situation, but in a totally different situation. Okay, I'm going to check that you're okay. okay. We're good. Very good. good that right there is how to de-escalate a situation. That's why I kept it in. Good job. I am, I am Mandalore. Decided not to pass by indifferently and help the open lane. Need. Possibly. The ambulance driver found out how dangerous. There's an open lane right there. You got the blinker, saw us, didn't want to move over. Okay. We're switching over to the shoulder. Oh, what happened? Somebody crashed. Ooh, good job with the like the seven point turn going on. He's walking, a little bit of a limp. Yeah, park right there. Position for safety. Keep an eye on the traffic coming up. Sit him down. He's got a med pack. You see that? He's got a he's got a pack. And he made his own. I love it. I love it. He is rescuing this rider. He's remaining calm. He's calling 911. He's ensuring his own safety by keep looking back and forth. He's got a kit to stop any major bleeds, and he's going to hopefully quickly assess the severity. He's getting the chain of survival going by calling 911 right away.
He's using the headlights to be able to see the victim. Off-duty EMT, it looks like it. Now we got more victims, more patients. So she is handling, so this is what I'm seeing. So there's probably two people on the ambulance. She's handling the, the initial patient. The other guy uh, or the other EMT or paramedic um, is now handling the, the car. And they're having to call in more resources. So typically it'd be two people on, on this, uh, on the rider but they had to split resources because of a whole new new accident, new incident. Wow. Good job, Mandalor. I am Bob. Here we go. Open lane pattern. We switched over to, not a big deal. We slowed down. We weren't speeding. Everyone decided to switch over. We're switching back over. Open lane pattern again. <laughs> Look at that. This is open lane pattern right here. Open lane pattern. Just road rage possibly. Oh my gosh. J-Rock, here we go. Line of sight, you can see, not a good space cushion. We're lane filtering position, not a big deal. Don't run over grandma. Ooh. Got very lucky. Very lucky. Now people are, he's a Honda Rebel. People are getting pissed. Whatever, move on. On the pegs, here we go. Any traffic coming our way? Ooh, open lane, accelerate or brake? Accelerate or brake? There you go, get yourself out of there. Accelerate or brake. Handled it, handled it. Okay, let's move on. We don't need slow motion, we saw it. Uh, MF pun, here we go. Moto Stars, good job with the videos, by the way, man. This is a good week. Merging area, this is gonna be an orange stage situation. Okay, both people don't know what they're doing. We have to apply the brakes, handled it. Make sure we don't get rear-ended, position yourself off. Got a quad lock. Very good. Good line of sight, you can see how you can see far. We got some rain coming in, some road surface hazards, the red. Oh no, those are, uh, it's a crosswind. What are we doing, man? Okay, right turn lane. A little bit of a road rage. Let them be up in front. Let them, just let them be up there. If they crash, you have a good space cushion. I wear earplugs. I wear earplugs when I ride. Got lots of road surface hazards Thanks here. For watching till the end. Oh, you're welcome, Moto Stars. Thank you so much for having such a great video. Guys, remember, 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 ride safe, be safe, plan your ride, and then uh, utilize the MTC awareness stage. Just sign up for the MTC Rider Academy. I'll see you there. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys later. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. Look at that. Let's go hang out in the office. Whew. I just use uh, um, earplugs in my cardo, and I can still hear it perfectly. You left your pizza? Go ahead and go back in there and grab your pizza. One sec, I had I got some some text. How'd you guys doing? How you guys doing? I got some text messages. I got interesting. Man, it's already noon. Wow, look at that. Office needs pizza. Ah, we don't we don't like to eat in here because we get sticky fingers all over the mahogany. Okay, we don't want to have that. Oh, 
man. I need some water. One of you guys want to grab me water? Appreciate it. Uh, do you want ants? Because that's how you get ants. Yeah. Uh, any particular brands? No. No particular brands. Just the ones that stay in your ears. Okay. Very nice, tall boy. Whatever works, man. Whatever works. Let's get to 300 likes, guys. We only need 12 more likes. If you haven't hit that like button, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Dun, 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 dun. Watch all your video through this. Though I was sub, but I wasn't. Ah, well, hopefully you are now. Almost 300 likes, 296. We got 296 likes. You need four more. Click that like button, please. Mantanova. Ooh. Did Max first basically stop making videos after Dan and 90% of the community called him out? Um, I think he just stopped posting, but he's still riding. I know that. 305 likes. Very nice. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Dun, dun. Yeah, earplugs are great. It was a great road in Tucson to practice long turns and curvy roads. Um, old Spanish trail. Old Spanish trail. Easy. Those are easy curvy roads. Old Spanish Trail east of uh, Houghton. I always watch your videos now. I got my motorcycle license in the U.S. after riding for two years, like 12 years ago. Nice. Yeah, you're a little bit late on the Kentish Roads. We saw you, though. We saw you. Broken Adam's Apple. Oh, man, your cricord cartilage. Ooh-wee. Um, don't put it on your Adam's apple. Put put the strap on your underneath your jaw. Keep it nice and loose. The goal is that it doesn't fly off when you crash, but um, ouch. How long ago did it break? How'd you break it? I use I reuse my earplugs for a little bit, but I have like this jar of them and I throw them out when they get a little nasty. Oh, my lower back has been killing me lately. I need to start stretching my hammies. music MMA sparring got hit with an elbow oh man right in the throat right in the throat and what a day it's already noon I'm setting up the office so that we can have some better uh, uh, production quality um, I'm excited I'm excited for some some cool things happening some really cool things happening Got, just got your endorsement, almost laid my bike down on a corner where someone must have hit the shoulder and threw gravel over the pavement. That was fun, yeah. Jigsaw bra is crazier than the max wrist. I, I, I would say they're both the same kind of crazy, just different kinds. That makes sense. They're both the same kind of crazy, but different kinds. <laughs> they're both nuts. Just different risks. They're taking on different risks, both taking a lot of risks. I think Jixer just goes straight. I haven't watched Jixer in a while, but I know what Max Riss does. And he just... Max Riss likes the corners and Jixer likes the, the interstates, right? Or freeways. You and your dad are going to get your license next fall. Very nice. Very nice. Any travel plans? Uh, nothing. Nothing right now. Nothing right now. Okay. Stunt Rider versus Street Rossi. Very nice. Any good tracks to learn near Tucson? Yeah, there's... Uh, I think there's a track in Eloy. It's about... Was it 45 minutes away? Tell 
Took a second grade teacher out for a ride. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't go down. I don't want people to get hurt. You know, they do their own thing. He lives his own life. He has his own risks. He lives with the consequences. It's not my consequence. It's not something I have to live with. Um, but I don't want to see anybody get hurt. We want to see class rides. You do that local? Uh, no, I don't do group rides because... Because I don't. Um, I want to do more stuff in town, though. Thank you, Jerry. The, from passenger cars to CDL. Yes, nice. The principles apply, right? Yeah. I've been thinking about doing uh, like a live kind of hangout. So bear with me here. A little like a uh, like live hangout. Um, Thursdays. So today's Thursday. We do a class in the morning on Thursdays. But I'm thinking about doing a live hangout at my place uh, online on the Discord and just kind of hang out. It's 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 called After the Ride, but it's not going to be the podcast. I'm kind of still playing with it, whatever it is. Um, kind of like a just, yeah, just chatting sesh. Um, and it's going to be on the Discord. Maybe not tonight. Eh, who knows? I might try it out. I might play around with it. Oh, I need caffeine. And uh, we'll see how it goes. It might be just for Discord and uh, the MTC Rider Academy, though. It's not going to be on YouTube. It's kind of like a little just just hanging out sesh. He's only crazier that way. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Bilbo, how you doing? Any recommendations for hot weather gear in Arizona? Um, anything that's perforated. Um, I have, I mean, I have climb gear, but before that, I had like uh, Fly Cool Pro Two, uh, Reacts Alta Mesh, um, anything that's mesh oriented. Get that airflow going, man. Uh, Joe Rocket's good. I mean, Joe Rocket Phoenix gear. I think it's like the Phoenix Five Point That's something. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brett Babbitts, how you doing? Oh, man. Oh. You're welcome, Giddy, Giddy Prime. I think I'm going to be heading out too, guys. Um, I'm going to edit some of these videos. Um, I want to get uh, some of this stuff done. Um, maybe kind of relax my, my back. Tomorrow morning, I got a, a therapy appointment. I'm going to go ahead and uh, not physical therapy, uh, but I take care of my mental health, guys. I hope you guys are taking care of your mental health. Uh, make sure you guys get some rest and relaxation. Schedule that stuff in because if you don't, you're just going to fill that time with being productive and getting more work done. Uh, sometimes you just need a full-on nervous system reset. Get yourself in a jacuzzi. Get yourself in a, in, a, in a pool. Go out for a nice walk. Get out in the heat. Work out a little bit. Do whatever it is you need to do to get your your mental and physical health in check. Uh, but that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the day today after I do some editing. I'm going to go ahead and edit some of these videos so you guys can have them, especially on the MTC Rider Academy. So any of you guys that signed up for the MTC Rider Academy, I appreciate it. That's how you make this stuff happen. So if you like these free classes, guys, please, please think about supporting on the MTC Rider Academy. It's $10 a month. You get a full year. You get all the downloadables. The first day, you're getting $60 plus worth of, of downloadables right away. So there it is. And it's basically like a $60 basic smart writer class with the drills, with with the webinars. Like, I need to be raising the prices. <laughs> I need to be raising the prices. Um, sign up. It, it supports what we're doing here. It, it really does. The more signups we get, the more I can start doing local stuff and... Um, we can start, you know, maybe expanding and maybe get like a local chapter going on, and then we can start expanding throughout the United States. I would love to, do, I would love to do that. I would love to do that. Um, but with that said, guys, I got to get going. Um, I'll be seeing you guys uh, next week. But uh, we have new videos every uh, every weekend and a newsletter Tuesday, Thursdays when you sign up for the academy. So, guys, I'll be seeing you around.